Doc Bailey, president and owner of Renegade Light Sport Aircraft. You've got a different engine in this airplane, which is going to, I think, turn some heads. Yeah, we've had uh, the whole show, we've literally kind of captured the audience, so to speak. The new Lycoming engine, especially the 233 that Lycoming has put out, light sport specific, air cooled, direct drive engine, fuel injected, electronic ignition, kind of your Harley of light sport, if you will. They've really cut a lot of the weight out of it to make it a light sport. Uh, right now we're looking at 211 pound dry weight on the engine and it's been a head turner. You know, Lycoming has been named since the 1940s and we've made the aircraft light enough to put a real aircraft engine in a real airplane and yet meet the light sport criteria. What made you go with a Lycoming engine? What made you think about we need to put this kind of an engine in the light sport category? Well, we listen to our clients. I've been at the air shows now for five years in light sport. The guys with the gray hair who uh, have a little aviation experience and time and effort in the planes are used to Lycoming Continental. And when you tell a gentleman that he wants to uh, take off with 5,900 RPM, he gets a little, little twitchy. And the guys have a good comfort level with the name of Lycoming. And when you can cruise at 2,200 RPM and do the 120 knots, they like that. And it's direct drive. They don't have to have the gear reduction. It's just something that they're very comfortable with. And that gives you what kind of fuel consumption on cruise? Well, right now with the fuel injection we have at 22 crews, we're, we're sitting at, uh, the book says 5.2, but we're doing a little better than that because uh, the aircraft will do more than 120 knots. So our cruise at 2200 RPM gives us a, a smooth 4.8 sipping of the regular fuel. So it's very economical and it's very powerful. Uh, the engine at 2000 RPM takeoff, we're single pilot crews taking off at 80 knots instead of 70, our best rate of climb at 1500 feet a minute. How did you get the airplane light enough then to accept a quote-unquote real airplane engine? Yeah, that's the key. A lot of the airplanes that are around here, the metal planes are just simply too heavy to put the engine in. We have an all Kevlar composite carbon fiber plane. The whole airplane with the engine itself doesn't weigh 795 pounds. So by us being able to lighten our aircraft up, give it the strength and stability of the composite components, we're able to put this nice engine in the front of it and nobody else can. And so that gives you what kind of useful load? Oh, we're right at 525 pound useful load, which is ballpark for most any of them with the Rotax engine as well. But uh, as you can tell, you know, 122 horses and 700 pound machine. We like to think of it as the, uh, you know, high performance light sport category. The beauty of the Release 9 system architecture is that you have two fully redundant integrated flight displays. Each has access to all the systems and data. Providing full redundancy and eliminating traditional reversionary modes, Release 9 allows either display to be configured as the PFD. Now your failure modes are much more manageable because you can continue to fly with the same familiar display symbology without the need to relearn composite modes you don't typically fly with. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is truly the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology. Okay, Doc, take us through this engine a little bit. Uh, show us some of the features that you've got on here. Well, we'll start at the prop. Uh, right here at the prop, we put a beautiful handmade uh, Craig Cato prop on it. Craig holds several Reno World Speed records with his props. Uh, nickel line, all composite prop. The prop doesn't weigh nine pounds. Uh, we come back to the flywheel. What Lycoming's done is taken out a lot of the solid flywheel. And as you'll see here, it has a, a, a cutouts for it that lost two or three pounds there. Every little pound of light sport makes a difference. I mean, you, when you're talking about 1,320 pounds, uh, you take a few washers off here and there, it all adds up. Uh, the, our bafflings that we have, which are specific to us, we make them, we'll be making them out of carbon fiber for now, it gives you a direct ram injection that goes over top of the cylinders where the vents are, and it gives us a supercharging of cooling over, we don't have cooling problems, but when we put this on, we know we won't. And then you'll see these stainless steel braided lights to the spider fuel injection system. These are direct port right in, bypass the carburetor, go right to the head to atomize. An extremely efficient uh, system, <coughs> as everybody knows. And then all our braided lines and uh, the way we've mounted it is very sturdy, very, very apropos, so no vibration, cracks the lines, that kind of thing. Back here we have the uh, electronic ignition system from Champion Aerospace. Very, you know, 23,000 volt electronic ignition system. We're talking about a huge amount of spark. We cut eight pounds off by getting rid of the magnetos on the back. You'll see it's a lot less maintenance, a lot more efficiency, better performance, better fuel economy. It's, it's welcome to 2000, you know, welcome to the 21st century. And Lycoming was very gracious working with us over the years. This is our third year working with this. And you know, we're, we're really proud that they picked our airframe and people to put the airframe in. We've done all the flight testing and uh, October 6th was the first flight of the 233 ever. 
in any aircraft and it was in our airframe. And we worked hand in hand with them and those guys are very progressive, very forward future thinking and you know they have a bunch of young engineers that are out there trying to make their mark and put like homing back on the map as number one and as you can see they're doing a hell of a job. What is the procedure, how has the procedure changed with a fuel injected uh, electronic ignition engine? Well for one thing the fuel injection you put your fuse pumps on and automatically charges the engine for fuel. You don't have to worry about carb icing. You don't have carburetor heat. Everything is taken out of the equation with the fuel injections to begin with. So you throw your boost pump on, wait a few seconds for it to charge, and you can hear it charge. And then because it has such a high spark, literally by the time the, the prop goes around one turn, you're starting. So your starting procedure is just cut in half. Now as you're getting going, you're doing your mag checks, you don't have to worry about 150 drop. You know, you don't have to worry about that 300 magneto not working. Maybe just, just a little bit of drop, that's all it gets. They're very efficient, a triple redundant system. It's so nice, you, you, you have your system, it works, does a battery backup, generator goes out. As long as the prop's turning 700 RPM, which when doesn't it, it generates its own spark like an old tractor does to keep it in the air. You lose total electrical failure, you're gonna fly home anywhere you are, as long as you got gas. So <clears throat> it makes it a very simple, easy starting procedure, magneto drop, and you would do it just the same as you would. It has a lot left and right uh, CPU pack, and it's uh, very, very dependable. Freedom through innovation. It's what led us to develop Cirrus Flying 2.0, the framework for a bold new take on private aviation. And as a result, the gap between the aircraft we produce and those of our competitors continues to widen. Cirrus knows where the personal aircraft industry is headed. We're already there. Okay, basically this is our standard package that we used. Uh, we've gone exclusively with the Grand Rapids package. We think they're the most cutting edge company. They've worked with us extremely well. This is the Synthetic Vision. Your engine ethos is here. You can go through the screens if you want to. The GPS is built in, which is awesome. You don't have to have a separate portable GPS. It gives you the engine instruments uh, a wider range of different options to put. SL30, it'll do uh, the built-in autopilot. is a new feature they've just come up with. So now, as you can see, as this clean installation is, you got your carbon fiber background, only five switches for lights, strobes, nav. So what we've done is a standard package put in the dual panels in it. You'll see the Garmin SL40, the GTX transponder. Very soon, even Grand Rapids is building in the transponder. So now we'll have two panels and a little radio here. And I'm old school, so we put in the backup steam gazes on the top. This whole package you see with the engine and everything starts out $125,000. So, you know, we load it up. We don't go, all oh, the plane's $100,000. Would you like a set of wheels? How about a prop to go with that plane? You know, it sure makes it fly a little better. What we've done is put everything together into, into one package that a guy can live with that's not $170,000, $50,000, but he has everything he wanted to begin with to fly. Doc Bailey with Renegade Light Sport Aircraft, thank you very much for talking with us on Aero TV. Hey, it was our pleasure. We were glad to be able to show you all the features of the plane, and we really appreciate you coming by the show.